All right. Thank you for uh, thank you for tuning in here for our Facebook uh, our Facebook Live fireside chat. Although it's pretty hot here, so I should call it something else. I got the ocean in front of me here. I'm in Dillon Beach, California, 65 miles north of San Francisco. Uh, I got ranch land behind me, and I'm sitting here in my office. And uh, I am so glad to connect with you. I'm going to tell you a story in a moment, and this story was a life changer for me. And it's been amazing for my relationship uh, with Nancy. And I'm going to tell you the story. And I hope that this story will have some impact with you and transform your relationships. Now, if you're a person that wants to have more intimate, more caring, uh, more honest relationships, stick with me throughout this Facebook, uh, this Facebook Live. And I'll talk about ways to do that after I talk about the story. If you're a person where your relationships are all A-OK and uh, nothing needs to be changed or you don't need to change anything, then this is the Facebook Live that you want to skip. You know, go off and uh, have a beer and watch some, uh, watch some football or something. But if you are into relationships or working with people on relationships, here we go. So... Um, for a long time, I did transformational leadership training, still do once in a while. And these were live classes. They were five day classes or they were seven day classes or they were 10 day classes where groups of people got together and looked at their life and how to create more satisfaction, more fulfillment, create more results in their life. It was a group of people that were uh, just honest and open about creating something in the future. And a lot of it was about making a difference in the world, making a difference for other people. In the process of those trainings, we had many conversations of a very emotional and powerful nature. And so I want to talk about one of those conversations. In the room, with 80 people in the room, all of us sharing and talking. And there was this guy that stood up about the third day of the training. And he said that he wanted to talk about relationship in himself. He wanted to talk about some dreams, some goals, some things that he wanted to create in his life. And he was unable to create them. And he wanted to work through that and talk to all of us about it. So... The story that he told was one that might be familiar, at least familiar in some way to many of us. And that was the story of falling deeply in love with this girl when he was young. And the way that he described the ending of that relationship was he called it betrayal. He was betrayed in some way in that relationship and it broke up and it really left him heartbroken. It really left him doubting himself in, in, in many ways. And as he talked to this, he had that a lot of emotion around it, a lot of feeling, as you can imagine. But it's not a story that's unfamiliar to most of us in some way. But what occurred for him was from that moment on that that betrayal occurred, he developed a belief system inside himself that women can't be trusted. Women can't be trusted. And so his belief system was very deep-seated. Now, as you and I as adults, as people working with people, people managing people, owning business, and all this kind of stuff, we would have to say to each other reason and, with a reason and logic uh, uh, way of talking that, of course, women can't be trusted or men can't be trusted. That's some of them. Some of them can. It depends on the circumstance. It depends on the person. But that's a real reason and logic way to look at things. Because of the emotional impact, we often bury things inside ourselves, belief systems that are powerful in guiding us that we don't even realize. They become subconscious guides in our life. They have nothing whatsoever to do with reason and logicing things out until you bring it conscious, which, which, which is what this gentleman was going to do. And he found out that he... Uh, that this driving force in his life, women can't be trusted, 
um, resulted in him having a series of relationships. As he described it, one to three months long, and then they would break off, they'd break up. And so what would happen was, what was happened, he was about um, 30 years old or so, a long series of these kind of relationships. And oftentimes he found himself breaking off the relationship before he could get what he called betrayed or what before the other shoe dropped in the relationship, he would end it. Or he would see that it was ended in some way and he was creating something. But he shared with us that what he wanted, what he really wanted more than anything in his life was to have uh, an intimate and caring and long-term partnership with someone. And so in the discussion of this, in the realization of his belief system that women can't be trusted, he noticed his behavior. He began to see that it was going against the very thing that he was looking for. I don't know if you relate to this behavior in us that we do that doesn't produce the result that we want and we keep doing it anyway. And sometimes we even know better. Um, I mean, I can, I can relate to that for me, maybe not for you, but maybe for you, you can see that in yourself as well. And that's the driving force. And one of the problems was that in the fact that he believed that women can't be trusted, that he gathered around him friends that had some of the same belief systems. And so when they went out to have a beer or talk uh, and talk, and they would decide, yeah, women can't be trusted or women are this way. And now you've got two people in agreement or maybe three people in agreement. And then what you've got is a bunch of people around you with what's called created reality. <laughs> and then we have all the evidence. We can, we can go through the stories about why our belief systems around relationships are true. This happened, this happened, it's all true. And we can sound very uh, convincing. But in the end, what he really wanted was a breakthrough in this, to figure out what was going on. So he was looking for trust and loyalty and caring in a relationship. Now, I think what a lot of us do is we go out and we go on a hunt. We don't exactly know that's what we're doing, but what we're doing is we're going out on this hunt. And what we're looking for is um, approval or to be seen as powerful or uh, what I wrote down some, some, to be loved or respected, to be supported, to be appreciated, to be cared for. We look for loyalty and honesty and security and acknowledgement. We're, we're searching out there for someone to fulfill something that seems to be missing in ourselves. This is some of the stuff that we have around parents, how we were treated, something that was missing in us. And the hunt is, is to find the person that's going to fill that missing part of ourself. Fill, I call it just kind of filling the hole in us. And we get in relationship. And if we meet somebody that we fulfill what they're missing, now we have a relationship. And in the beginning of all of those relationships, it feels really good. I'm finally found, uh, as, as the old movie used to say, you complete me. Or I found that person that, can, uh, that fulfills all of those things that I've been missing. And I feel great. Now, the problem with that, and the point of, and one of the points of this story is, it, it, well, I'll ask you a question. How long can the other person shovel in something we're missing in ourselves? How long can they give and give and give and give to us to try to fill that hole within us before they get tired? You see, what happens is 
We have that expectation. They have that expectation. And it's like shoveling coal into a boiler. It's like shoveling this, uh, continuing to do this. And finally, the other person tires out. And when the other person tires out, what happens is, or we tire out, what happens is we say, you no longer make me feel good. I'm no longer getting, you promised that you were going to make me feel good. And so now that's over. So the relationship is over. And I will su suggest to you that that's really where the relationship starts. So the point of the story of our guy who absolutely solved this problem with some hard work and looking at himself and, um, and, being, and feeling the emotion around it is that we need to fill the holes in ourselves to really bring something to our relationships. Now, what I mean by that is that we have got to go do the hard work of bringing forth this self-worth within ourselves, this appreciation, this love for ourselves. And so we have something solid to bring relate to relationship. So this list I just read you, love, respect, support, appreciation, being cared for, loyalty, honesty, and acknowledgement is something you should have in your relationships. Those are great things. However, I think they need to be earned, not expected. And how do you earn those things in relationship? Is that you give them, you give what you want to receive. This has been my experience working with thousands of people. Is I've seen the people who have worked themselves through and then they're able to give loyalty, love, support, acknowledgement. They bring honesty and trust to relationships, not waiting for the other person to get into a bargain with them. Well, I'll bring this much and you bring this much and that you need to make me feel good. Then the real relationships start. So what I'm going to suggest is that you find this partner you have, this relationship you have, maybe a spouse, a uh, friend, whatever this relationship is, you want to make better. And here's what you do. You do what's called the radical, radical, honest conversation. The radical, honest conversation. That you sit down and you peel away this whole thing about uh, the ideal person that we've sort of invented ourselves to be. And then we expect people to to love the ideal person and we peel it back to the real person. That gap between the ideal and real is where a lot of this suffering takes place. We want them, we think they can't love the actual real person. They can't care. But how is anybody going to know unless they know you? So, so they got to know us. And this is the radical honest conversation. So I have some questions that you can ask when you get in a place of honesty, when you can sit alone with this other person. So here's what you find out about the other person. What is important to you? Very few people are ever asked that question. What is important to you? Imagine being asked that and being listened to. Find, even if you've been married 30 years as I have, we always go back because people change and they forget to tell each other in relationship. <laughs> Find out what's important to the other person. Find out what they think is an ideal life. You may be surprised at what an ideal life is for that person. And maybe it matches yours a little bit. Maybe not. I don't know. But if it's not put out there, honestly, if you don't have this radical, radically honest conversation, you keep dealing with ideal selves and not the real self, then it's very difficult to get the intimacy and connection. Next, um, what have you always wanted to do? What are you afraid to share? And what do you need from me? The questions are, what's important to you? What's your ideal life? What have you always wanted to do? What are you afraid to share? And finally, what do you need from me? And in that adjustment and in that conversation, it, 
It may be emotional. It may be powerful. It may be have some stuff come up. But it's well worth having a great conversation with the person in your life to find out how you can serve them rather than having to shovel everything toward you. Remember, give in relationship what you want and you will be surprised at what comes back. You guys are great. Thank you for being on this Facebook Live and we will have another one next Wednesday. And we're going to talk about some things about leadership and about working with other people in the next one we do. And we'll have some surprising stuff to talk about. If you want to connect with me, just message me how you like this present, uh, how you like these ideas that I have, or if you have a question about it, or Patrick at PatrickDeanCoaching.com. Just email me. If you have questions about this, um, I'm glad I answer every email. So you guys are awesome. Have a great evening. Come from radical honesty and go out there and see how you can serve. We'll see you on the next Facebook Live. Awesome and see you again. Bye-bye.